Hi, this is Ben with Novalux Stereophonic, and today on the bench I have an AccuPhase P300 power amplifier. This is going to be my first time working on this specific amplifier. I've worked on other AccuPhase stuff. Um, I know the construction is top notch. I saw this come up on the used market in as-is condition and I snatched it up. Very cool amplifier, just on initial look. See, AccuPhase, and it also has the Kensonic branding. This um, company was founded by one of the original owners of Kenwood. It's almost like an offshoot of Kenwood, but very high end. Uh, it's got a fold down front here, and this is reminiscent of some of the Marantz amplifiers of the time, where we have a front facing um, speaker output here that accept, accepts banana jacks. There's also a front input. It's a very versatile amplifier. It's got these beautiful meters and there's almost like an anodized plate in the back, so there's a texture to this gray. I'm very excited to see this thing up and running. So anyways, the, the complaint from the original owner was it no longer powers on. Usually that means that maybe the power switch has failed, this feels a little bit wonky. Uh, it could also be um, uh, a fuse that may have blown because of some sort of channel failure. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. You'll be coming along with me on this ride in real time. I have not opened this unit. So uh, if that sounds interesting, stick around and we'll get started. Got the unit flipped upside down with the bottom cover off and it just did some initial inspections of the suspect area. So the, the mains fuse on this thing is huge, but put this on continuity just to check that the fuse is okay. The mains fuse is fine. So that means the, the primary of the transformer should be getting voltage if the power switch is okay. So if I go across the power switch, power switch is fine. So the primary of the transformer should be all good. And all the secondary fuses are good. So I'm a bit confused. We'll see. The only other thing I found was there was a piece of, um, of ceramic sitting inside of the unit. And it looks like this is chipped off of the soft start resistor. So it's possible there's an issue with the soft start circuit. Maybe the relay is not engaging and this thing is just sitting with um, uh, with a resistor in place cooking the resistor at power on so I'm gonna hook this up on the dim bulb and that should tell us a lot about what's going on Okay, so I went ahead and tested this on dim bulb and I think I've tracked down the root cause of the issue So I'm just gonna go through the procedure that that I did here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the power Switch is on this unit should be running. I've got nothing on the dim bulb over here and if I come over to the send core here, this is drawing no current so the next thing that I did was got the, the schematic for the input wiring and just checked to make sure that my primaries weren't shorted. So I've got you know a low resistance between here. I don't have an open or a short on either of my primaries. Um, and then when I was looking up here, I think what's going on is my guess is that this soft start resistor here is open. So normal in normal situation when you drop the power switch uh, current is going to flow into this section here which sets up um, the way the pr primaries operate depending on your main voltage and then the power supply is going to charge and the the timing circuit for the soft start relay is going to engage here pull this out and then it'll operate at full current my theory is that because i think this is open there's no way for this circuit to operate and pull in this relay. So I'm going to locate this soft start resistor, measure that. If it's open, I'll just bypass it and then we should be able to power this thing on. So I've removed the, the cover panel in the front here, which covers the meters and the power supply circuitry. And then I removed uh, this power supply card. It's actually a really cool design. I'm excited to work on this because it should be, it should be pretty easy to, um, to swap out parts in this because it's all modular. So down in here is my soft start resistor. It's kind of vertical in the back panel there. It's supposed to read at 2.2 ohms, but when I'm measuring across it, I get 175K. So I do believe that resistor is open. Um, what I'm gonna do is switch this over to measure current. So I'm basically 
putting my meter across this resistor and shorting it out. So it should be coming from the power switch straight into the transformers here. So what I'm going to do is slowly raise the AC level on my variac here and then see what happens on the dim bulb. So I'm starting to, oh, let me power, it's powered on. There's the power switch. So dim bulb is starting to glow. I'm only at 30 volts AC. Something Something's gonna be shorted inside of this. If I did this at full power, that would be very bright. So I think I have a short going on somewhere. And that's the next thing that I'll have to track down. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull the output cards and see if I can get this to, to do like a normal power supply power up without the output sections connected. Okay, so I pulled out these driver cards for the output section, you know, with the thought that perhaps something uh, is going on in the output stages causing a short um, condition at power on. But when I jumped the soft start resistor and tried to power on with those cards removed, I had the same symptom on the dim bulb. So I wanted to rule out the, the power transformer because that would be catastrophic if the power transformer had somehow shorted or failed. So I lifted uh, a couple secondary leads here and then just pulled the fuses for the remaining ones so that I could test all of the uh, all of the secondary coils or windings on the transformer. So what I've got going on here is I've got one meter connected across the blue wires. Um, the bench meter up here in the corner is attached to um, the brown and the yellow and then I'm just going between black and I think red here just to make sure that I've got the correct voltages. So these are all reference to ground. So 54.5 uh, plus 54.5, that should give me about 110 volts across this entire coil. And that's what we are seeing up there on the meter. And then this is from red to, to ground. And then the other meter here is blue to blue so 20 plus 20 is 40 everything looks completely fine with the power transformer so next up i'm going to test these uh, diodes around this area and the main filter capacitors and see if i've got something going on there so i checked the diodes around in this area and everything was good but even with the power supply um, and all the other cards removed it's still shorted so the next thing to look at that's going to be attached to the to the main rails is going to be the output transistors. So if I test down here on this channel, I get a normal diode response on the output transistors. On this other channel, I'm testing a short, at least on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all the outputs from, uh, from this channel and see if I can get this thing powered up and working on one channel, that would be a great place to be. Okay, so I went ahead and I pulled the output transistors. The right channel is the one that, that uh, measured with some short. So I ended up finding these two drivers were shorted and these two outputs were shorted. These other ones were fine. I pulled the left channel just so that I could check everything as well and all of these did test good. So hopefully I'll be able to get one channel up and running and use that as a base point to get the other one repaired. And now everything seems to power up normally. So this is with uh, both cards removed. Go ahead and give it power here. So this is the, actually it's four. There's four cards in total that are removed. All the outputs are removed. So it's basically just the, the main filter section working. And I have that soft start resistor bypassed at the moment. So let's go ahead and fire it up. And that's a normal charge sequence that we would see on a dim bulb. So you can't see it now, but the bulb is just uh, barely glowing and it's continuing to settle off. And I've got a minus 61.8 here. It should be positive rail here. Yes, so everything looks good on that front. Next up, I'm going to put in the power supply card and see if I have all the voltages that are supposed to be there. I wrote down all of the voltages that I'm supposed to be getting on the power supply card here. And I am looks like a transistor might be shorted or something in this 25 volt supply. I'm getting 56 volts here. And then on this 15, um, it's jumping all over the place. Pin 15 is supposed to be 16 volts. That runs the lamp circuit and something to do with the protection circuit as well. So I power it on. Goes through a normal sequence. The, the soft start resistor clicks. 
but I don't know if you can hear it in the background there. There's a, a little relay on this board that's just clicking in and out a bunch of times. That's also, I think, related to that 16 volt circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the power supply card here and see if I can find any bad components there to try to bring back the lamps and maybe get the protection circuit working properly. Right now the speaker relay doesn't click even with both cards removed. So getting the speaker relay to click is the first step before I test any of the driver cards. I printed a cutout of the power supply schematic. And what I'm looking to do is restore the 16 volts here. But what I'm getting is the supply voltage at this side. So uh, I was thinking initially maybe this transistor is shorted and this is just passing through or something's wrong with this base voltage. Um, so I've inspected the components around here and I believe that Q3 is compromised. So that is this transistor right here. If I do a diode check on that one, I get a short between collector and base. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and desolder that one and uh, see if that is the culprit. as a resistor. So let's get this replaced and see if that restores the 16 volt rail. So I replaced this suspect transistor and I made a mistake in the last shot. This is actually the plus 25 volt section. The plus 16 is down here. This is a really low res schematic so it's kind of hard to read. But anyways this one was replaced and then I went and tested everything here to try to restore the 16 volt rail and I couldn't find anything out of spec in this area. So I went ahead and just put the card back in just to check my plus 25, and this is what I found. So we get a speaker relay click, and the lights come in. But this is where I'm supposed to be 16 volts, I'm at about 8 volts. And you'll see again when I turn it on, the lamps come up slow. And the relay engages. But in any case, it's mission accomplished as far as getting this to a state where I can test an amplifier card. So um, I think I'll do that next. I'm going to be rebuilding the power supply in this anyway, so I'll probably come back to that 16-volt rail. Maybe have a bad reference or something um, in that circuit that needs to get corrected. But anyways, moving on, I am going to try to get the left channel operational. I checked all of the transistors just to see if there was any, uh, any shorts in the driver card for the left channel. Um, and powered it up and everything came in fine, relay clicked, so I'm going to put the drivers and the output devices back in place and we'll see if we can get a audio signal through this channel. I just finished doing a down and dirty thermal compound replacement on all the output transistors and drivers on this channel. Um, I'm probably going to be pulling them off very soon and replacing them with uh, current production transistors because I'm gonna have to replace both channels simultaneously during the restoration So I wasn't too worried about just slapping some thermal compound off so the devices don't blow up uh, For the meters here. I've got this one on uh, The emitter of one of the transistors here, and then this one is on the speaker output measuring DC offset So let's go ahead and fire this up Take this into millivolts so the service manual shows 25 millivolts from the emitters to ground. Uh, I'm on dim bulb, so I expect this to be a little bit low, but we should be able to get a signal through this thing. I just wanted to make sure it was safe before I made the connection. So it looks like the bias is in a safe range. It's not going crazy, and I've got very little DC offset. Okay, I've got the AccuPhase hooked up um, with the left channel to my 8-ohm dummy load, and then we can view it on the scope up here on the Siglent. So I've got the meters in in the lowest range. Let's go ahead and do a sine wave here. So we actually have a pretty nice clean sine wave there and the meter is functioning. This controls a little bit dirty, it's a little bit wonky in some of the ranges, but 
it's getting better as I manipulate it. So that's actually a pretty nice looking sine wave. Let's take a look at a square. Could be better, but that's not bad. So this thing's gonna have pretty flat frequency response already. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. This puts me in a good position for the restoration because I've got the power supply somewhat sorted. Still have that 16 volt rail to work out. Um, lamps are working, meters are working, one channel is working. So this is a really good spot to be for a restoration. Um, so I'm gonna end this video right here. I will have another series up uh, once I get some parts in. I need to order a new soft start resistor and then do a parts list for all the boards. This, this is a pretty old unit, so I'm gonna go ahead and recap the whole power supply. And these also have a lot of service bulletin modifications and there was a Mark II version of this and maybe some subsequent versions. So I'm gonna look and see what I can do to make this um, you know, as reliable as possible for the next owner. So if you like this content, please subscribe. I do a lot of work on this vintage audio equipment. Um, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you so much for stopping by.